What is up guys, this is Mike Willoughby and I'm here with another episode of The Steel Corner. Tonight, the episode I've been waiting for, I don't know about y'all, the episode I've been waiting for since I started this thing. Revolvers. We're going to be talking about my Steel Challenge setups, my foray into i and USPSA, and what I'm running, what has worked, what hasn't worked. So let's get into it. Tonight we're going to switch out books a little bit. Tonight we're going to Attainment by Troy Basham. Everybody in the competition shooting world is familiar with Lanny Basham, but not many people know about Troy Basham, Lanny's son. So Lanny's sons have also been highly accomplished shooters themselves and are in the family business now. So we're going to his book Attainment, and we're going to start off at the end when he summarizes everything. We're going to highlight element number three tonight, which is elite performers focus on opportunities, others focus on obstacles. What he says about that is successful people view obstacles as learning opportunities they must go through in order to reach their goals. Opportunities are both created and looked for with the focus on taking advantage of the situation at hand. So I don't think I really need to relay how that relates to competition shooting. Pretty evident. Not really specific to competition shooting either. Relevant in all areas of life. So with that being said, let's get to the topic. The revolvers. So this is my OSR gun that I run in Steel Challenge. Say Smith & Wesson 929 8-shot 9mm. All my guns have been worked over by Dave Olhasso. Gives them an amazing, I think my trigger is about five pounds on this. Really smooth. For the longest time, I did not have anybody work over my revolvers. I think I made GM in both divisions with a spring kit on it and just an extended firing pin. Stuff I could do at home and it was okay. It was pretty good. I think my trigger was about seven, seven and a half pounds back then and it ran. It worked, but there is a night and day difference between having the action completely worked over by a professional that knows these revolvers in and out versus just throwing a spring kit on and trying to polish it yourself. I've also heard that TK Custom does amazing work as well if you can't get a hold of Dave, but I would highly recommend going with Dave Olhasso. He may have a little bit of a weight, He's a one-man operation. Just send your guns to him. He'll take care of you. If you're getting into revolver division, I recommend buying a setup off somebody else that already runs. That way you can avoid having all this work done yourself. Or buying a revolver and immediately shipping it to Dave and having him run through that entire thing. So, on this revolver, I currently have Hogue grips. These are Michael Pogge's grips. Uh, you have to custom order those from Hogue. They're pretty similar in shape to Jerry's grips though that you can get off his website. Every once in a while he'll have a sale for however many percent off and I think you can get them as low as 50 bucks. Uh, these are Pogge's grips though. They work great on my ISR right now. You'll see that it currently has the Hogue fat bottom grips and that is because I was running USPSA with this gun. So for USPSA and i action shooting in general, I want to have these fatter grips on it. It allows you to get a better purchase on it. But for Steel Challenge in particular, I like this shape of grip because it allows you to adjust a little bit more coming out of the holster. The gun isn't as firmly planted in your hand and it's a little bit easier to straighten up when you come down on the gun a little bit crooked. So that's why I really like this shape of grip for Steel Challenge. Some other details on this gun, it has the all-chin optic mount with a Trigicon SRO 5 MOA on it. Other equipment that I run in these, I run TK Custom .040 Moon Clips and Federal Brass for all my revolver reloads. The nice thing about revolver is that you retain 100% of your brass. So I just bought a bunch of factory Federal ammo thinking that the primers would light off and they will on a revolver with a spring kit, but once the triggers have been done so smooth that they're down in the five pound range, I could not light off factory federal ammo. So keep that in mind if you're gonna try to harvest brass from a certain batch of ammo. If your revolver is mostly stock, you can probably run factory federal ammo, but in my experience, once they're tuned highly for the game, they're not running factory federal ammo. And keeping that same head stamp of ammo just really keeps everything consistent in your moon clips. You don't have to worry about something being slightly off because it's a different brand and it's formed a little bit differently. Uh, I've had great experience with that. I only crack a case or two here or there. My cases probably have 10 to 12 reloads on them now and they're mostly going strong. Maybe one or two cases every session of reloading a thousand rounds will I find. What else, what else? On my ISR gun, I also went with Dave Alhasso's iron sight package. So he replaces the rear blade, the front sight, and changes out the hammer. He normally cuts the little nipples on the front of the barrel off, but I'm waiting for a pogey to make his carbon fiber barrels for these. 
and then I'll throw those on so I didn't have that done. Uh, this gun is also about five to six pounds for the trigger and buttery smooth. There's something that I don't know what he does. I don't know what magic he works, but right about there, you can feel a clean wall in the trigger and it's a perfect staging point. So you're able to more efficiently and like more precisely stage your trigger than you are with the stock trigger. And that's probably the biggest change in doing the action on these is the weight is better of course but more importantly it gives it that clean staging point where you can just hold it there so i really wanted to make this episode tonight because i'm about to loan out my revolvers to a beautiful young lady who is going to go smash some world records and she doesn't know it yet but if she doesn't smash the world records then she owes me ten dollars a day every day that she has my revolvers so that's the incentive right so getting into other equipment for the division. This is a double alpha belt, just standard competition belt, nothing fancy. And then I use the double alpha moon clip holders. And there's currently eight on here for USPSA, falling steel, whatever. Currently eight. For steel challenge, I normally run six. And then for the holster, I am running the double alpha, alpha X. It's the old school version. Um, I do have a flex that I tried to run. However, the way it was set up, it allowed the gun to rotate upwards. It didn't retain it super great by the trigger guard by itself. And I don't think they have the muzzle support in stock right now. So I just stuck with my Alpha X. One thing about the Alpha X is you do have to come up a little bit. The way that these blocks work when you're drawing the gun, you have to come up before you go out. I'd say it's probably a half inch of motion that has to be completed. It's a little bit different from some of the other models out there, like the CR Speed, the Hogue Holster. Um, there's a couple other models that are popular. This one has worked pretty well for me. I used to bind it up all the time when I was getting started until I learned how to draw it properly out of this holster. And since then, it hasn't really been a problem at all. I think you can get more efficient holsters out there, but I didn't have anything custom made and I never got around to getting a different one. So this is the one that I've used the entire time. And it has taken me to number three in OSR and number three in ISR overall on the top 20 list. And just broke 100 seconds for the first time. I did a local eight stage with the OSR. So I could do that with this holster. It's worked pretty well. All right. So the loads that I'm using for the revolver for steel challenge in particular, like I said, federal brass earlier with the TK custom moon clip. And then I'm using a brass monkey bullets, 115 grain projectile, and I'm using bullseye powder at 2.7 to 2.8 grains. That gives it probably about 90 power factor. I don't really want to go much below that. My bullets are seated pretty low as well. So overall length is pretty short because I don't like to adjust the seating dial on my press very often. So it's set up to go as short as one of my pistols needs it. Um, yeah, that load is very tame, but it is nowhere near as weak as you can go on these revolvers. And I personally do not like to go any less powerful than that. I like those rounds to still be moving at a fairly good rate to ring the steel. I like it to be able to group at a decent distance, even though it's not really relevant that it can group, but I want to know that my shots are going where I think that they're going and I don't want to be waiting on my bullets to reach the target. Yes, you should be calling your shots and not waiting for any confirmation, but we all know there are those shots that you're not 100% sure about and you would like some confirmation before you move on. For i USPSA, Falling Steel, anything where I need some heavier power factor, I will run a Brass Monkey Bullets 147 grain projectile behind 3.3 grains of bullseye. That puts it right about 127, 128 power factor. Um, I haven't shot any major matches for USPSA. For i that chrono just fine and made power factor there, which I think is only 120 if I'm not mistaken. But for USPSA, if I was going to go shoot a major where it was chrono I'd probably bump that up 3.5 grains just to be safe. Um, what else do we have here? So the fun thing about shooting OSR and steel challenge is that the peak times are very similar to carry optics. Overall, it is only a two and a half second difference between carry optics being fast faster to OSR and that makes it so that you can go up to a match and you can compare your times to carry optics and have it be a pretty fair comparison. It won't be one for one, of course. There's a lot of differences in those platforms, but the peak times are pretty similar. So 
If you're bummed out because nobody at your local club shoots revolvers, you can shoot OSR and compare yourself to carry optics. ISR gets a little bit trickier. ISR is the slowest division and it's iron sights, which there aren't that many people shooting these days. So you're gonna have to compare yourself to production, limited, single stack, if anybody around you even shoots those. But those aren't super popular these days, at least in my area. So OSR, comparing yourself to carry optics was always the way that I went. Um, I did make master class in open shooting just the OSR. So I was able to get to about 89% I usually only ran that at major matches. At major matches, I would run OSR open, ISR limited, and then rimfire, whatever I was shooting at that time, usually rimfire pistol open. So that's how I made master and limited it as well. I made it with my ISR, just shooting ISR. Had one stage that I got to a grandmaster time with the ISR that I was super pumped about. Never did it again, but uh, I'm happy with that one limited Grandmaster stage using a revolver. I talked about this a little bit before in another episode, but in my opinion, using revolvers for your dry fire practice for Steel Challenge is the fastest way to learn trigger control and to get faster in Steel Challenge. And the reason for that is the always on trigger. So it's not like a striker fired where you pull it once and it's dead. And it's not like a double action, single action where you pull it once and you get your double action pull, but you can't replicate your single action pull every single time. The revolvers are true to their trigger pull every single time. And if you have a timer that you can set up on a stand, that picks up those shots, your dry fire practice is replicating almost all of your match conditions, minus a little bit of recoil and smoke and all that environmental stuff. But for the most part, these guns are super heavy. This is a massive gun. So even if you run a little bit faster of a bullet and you have a little bit more power factor out of it, they're not recoiling that much. So within dry fire, you are replicating a ton of match conditions and you have that true trigger pull every single time and your timer will tell you what your time was. So as long as you are good at calling your shots and you're practicing calling your shots and making up shots when you miss them or going on all out on speed mode, and just trying to see what times you can hit, your timer will tell you what you're doing. So if you're being truthful with yourself and calling your shots, you should have a pretty good understanding of exactly what you can do in live fire as well. For Iron Sight Revolver, it is possible to go extremely fast. Just like most divisions in Steel Challenge, once you get really good with an Iron Sight platform, you can run it almost as fast as you can run your Optic platform. If you look at the world records for the rimfire divisions, irons are very close to the optics times. The biggest thing when you're shooting ISR is getting your sight picture before you pull the trigger the rest of the way. So you have time to stage your trigger in between your targets and transitions on most stages, and it's just confirming your sight picture and making sure that you have a good sight picture, seeing what you need to see before breaking that shot. If you can have the visual discipline to wait it out on the revolver on ISR, until your sight picture is what you need it to be, you can easily run Grandmaster times with the Iron Sight Revolver. A couple words of caution and tips that I've learned along the way when shooting revolver, always carry a reload. I have reloaded on every single stage in Steel Challenge. There's not a single stage that I have not reloaded on while running the revolvers. And I will never take a 30 second stage because I didn't want to reload. Do not get in the habit of taking a 30 second stage, or sorry, 30 second string. Do not get in the habit of taking a 30 second string because you don't want to reload. You can either carry a case with your moon clips in it. I'll show you what mine looks like. It's great. You go to a match with all your moon clips loaded up and you don't have to worry about reloading in between stages. So you can take a case of moon clips up to the shooting line with you, but always keep one on your belt. You can keep one on a barrel or something, but I prefer to keep it on my belt. It's in the same place every single time. I know exactly where it is. Like I said, I run all six moon clip holders on my belt. I don't take my big case up to the firing line with me, but I always have have that sixth moon clip if i need a second reload i'm kind of out of luck but i always have that one i've never needed two reloads on the same stage before luckily so get in the habit of reloading when you need to another big tip that i picked up for the revolvers is when you are dry firing you need to have a moon clip full of dummy rounds 
in your revolver because it drastically changes your trigger pull. You will notice a difference, especially if your guns are tuned up and extremely slick. You will notice a difference between dry firing your gun with a moon clip with rounds in it and with dry firing your gun empty. The trigger feels a good bit different. So make sure you are dry firing with a moon clip with dummy rounds in there. Of course, always verify that your dummy rounds are dummy rounds before you pull that trigger, but always be dry firing with dummy rounds in your revolver. You put it over top of your round and twist and it pulls it off. That's it. So there is that. That will make your life unloading much easier. Second thing, moon clip loader. This is the BMT Mooner. These are just Delrin. There's a couple of magnets in the top here that hold your moon clip while you're loading it. So you put your moon clip on here, it goes around that circle, works great on the TK custom moon clips. And then you put your rounds in this long track here. You seat your moon clip and this little piece into here. And then as you push your rounds in, you spin it and it seats all eight of them. Pretty quick, pretty efficient. I really like these. I wore one out and I bought another one. That's how much I like them. They're not cheap, but uh, it's the best method that I've found. I also have a TK custom loader that I'll throw in my bag for a backup. It's not bad either, but I find the BMTs a little bit quicker. The next critical thing for a revolver is case gauging all of your reloaded ammo. Do not mess around with jacked up ammo with your revolver. You will try to force a moon clip in and it will break something. You do not want that to happen so don't be lazy case gauge all your ammo it doesn't take that long get a 100 or hundo or whatever this thing's called the shock bottle 100 round case gauge use those don't jack up your revolvers and break parts because you're too lazy to spend an extra five minutes on your reloads all right next thing makes your life way easier this is actually a tackle box from walmart they're relatively inexpensive as well this is a flambo 4007 zm i think uh the clear color is another code but i think 4007 is what you're looking for with this size you can hold 24 moon clips so these are all loaded this is exactly how i would roll up to a match if i'm shooting eight stages i'll take two of these if i'm shooting two revolvers twice so shooting four matches with the revolvers essentially i'll roll up with eight of them and my recommendation is to pick up 40 moon clips at least. You'll probably want 45 because you also want to have some loaded up for dry fire. Maybe some extra even though I've never needed to replace mine. And then load up your moon clips as you're going up to a match. That's my recommendation. It takes a ton of stress off. Like when you get done shooting, you just chuck your used ones in the container, pull out five new ones and you're ready to go. It takes so much pressure off in between shooting stages. I love it. I always roll up to a match with all my ammo loaded. These holders are great, make everything super convenient. They fit in your bag, they're rigid, would recommend. I think that about covers it as far as gear is concerned with the revolvers. On my iron sight gun, I do have an extended cylinder release, but I'm a lefty and I had to grind that down a good bit. I don't know how much you can tell but i took a lot of material off of that and then also right here on the grip i took a lot of material out just because when i was unloading moon clips would hang up right here so i smoothed that out a good bit as well i don't have the most experience so i've shot one major icor match that was the east coast regional last year actually won a gun at it, which was pretty cool. Came in third and open. That was my first time reloading a revolver on the clock. It was great. Shot it with the OSR gun, of course, but with the extended cylinder release and the fatter grips on it, that was fun. I tried my hand at some USPSA here recently with the ISR and irons just aren't my thing. It's fun, but I'm, I have so many goals and so many things that I'm working on for Steel Challenge, and I can make it to a Steel Challenge match almost every single week. So I'll still continue to shoot USPSA if there's nothing else available. Or shout out to Derek at the NRA range here in Fairfax, Virginia. He runs some great hour-long indoor matches, four stages really quick. I'll continue to shoot those as I can with work, but uh, right now USPSA is not a priority for me. It's really fun. Uh, it's a ton of fun running revolver at USPSA. It's a totally different mindset compared to carry optics, which is what I made master with in USPSA. Right now, based off the first two classifiers I shot, I'd classify like right at A class. 
So right where I would be anyway, because I had already a master in USPSA and carry optics. So right there at that A class level, which is fine. Um, I may eventually like try to get fully qualified and actually go to nationals and just play around. But right now it's not a priority for me, so I don't really care. Maybe once they roll out limited 10 with revolver, I'll try that out because that's way better with an optic, even though I have my own opinions on that. My opinion, they should just nix the re restriction on optic sights in revolver division for USPSA and open it up to optics and irons. That's my opinion, what they should do, because who the hell shoots irons these days? Just open it up, let everybody run what they brung. You don't have to change your gun if you don't want to, but obviously you're going to be at a disadvantage. Not that it matters, because you're already at a disadvantage because you're the only person shooting revolver. So just open it up in my opinion. So that's really my only experiences with i or USPSA. Um, I do dry fire a little bit for reload. Another thing with revolvers is you need to make sure that you keep your cylinder clean. And under the extractor star, you need to keep that clean as well. When there's powder in there, you will hang up your cylinder. So there won't be enough room in between your moon clip and this breech face. I don't know what it's technically called. There won't be enough room in there for that to close all the way and your cylinder will drag on your trigger pull and can break things by itself but also you'll have a 20 pound trigger pull which you don't want so make sure you're keeping under the extractor star clean if you notice a bunch of unburnt powder in your reloads you probably want to change your reload so that you don't have to worry about that mine were pretty bad for a while but i finally found a load that worked well for me and it's not so much of an issue anymore every once in a while if you watch my videos or watch me shoot revolver, I'll uh, do that. And that's just to knock out a couple flakes of extra powder that may have gotten in there. But it's not an issue overall these days. But you always want to make sure that you're keeping the front of your cylinder clean. And then under the extractor star, you want to make sure that's clean. I make sure to clean this face right here as well. So everything in here, I don't want any dragging. I don't want to put any undue pressure on the cylinder or cause that trigger pull to go up at all. Other than that, I haven't even taken the side plate off of these since I got them back from Dave Alhasso and I probably ran, I don't know, maybe 15,000 rounds through the OSR and 5,000 through the ISR. So they're going pretty good. I'm sure they need some cleaning inside, but they've been. So that's about going to do it for the revolvers, guys. Don't overcomplicate it. The list of equipment is out there. There's a few guys running these at crazy levels. I've only been doing this for about a year or so with the revolvers, but I was able to get it done. So if you're interested, it's a really fun division. You can compare your times to carry optics. You can compare your iron sight times to production and limited since hardly anybody shoots them anyways. And yeah, it would be a ton of fun. You'll stand out at the range. People will come to know you as the revolver guy, and then you'll have to go shoot something else to show them that you can shoot everything. As far as what's happening with me, last week I shot GRB, which is Greater Richmond Blasters, down near Richmond, Virginia. I shot RFPI with the Volkortz and Scorpion. It was much warmer out. I had zero malfunctions, and it was great. Threw a compensator on the front, threw an all-chin comp on, but I just got the Volkortz and comp put on it, and then that was great. Everything worked perfect with RFPI. Also shot carry optics, and I don't know what was going on. I was fumbling my draw like crazy. I don't think I had maybe one or two smooth draws the entire day. Ended up running a 96 on roundabout, 96%, and a 100% on pendulum, but the rest of the day, I don't know what was up. I was running like 88, 90%. Not my best performance, but we got it done with RFPI, so now I have three stages, 99%, 101, and I think 103. Uh, still sitting only at 89% because I have a 65% stage in there as well from when I was having all those malfunctions the first match I shot it at. So hopefully next time we shoot speed option, we'll jump straight to GM with that thing. Shooting again this weekend, I'm going all the way out. It's about three, three and a half hours away from me to hurt Virginia for VA Steel. And they run one of the best matches that I've ever been to. In the winter, they've got heaters on every single bay. They've got hot hands available for free at the club. They make hot chocolate and bring it around. They have dedicated ROs on each squad. The ROs also shoot, but uh, it's one person that's designated as the RO other than when they're shooting and usually a person before or after. So amazing match. Amazing people there as well. They're running uh, AMG Commander Timers. So it's a huge drive for me, huge time commitment. It takes up my entire Saturday, 
but it's worth it. So find those local matches near you, find the matches that are amazing and support the heck out of them because they're what makes the sport continue. Week after that, we got Thurmont Saturday match. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We got a huge, great squad that's gonna be shooting. We got the PA crew plus myself, uh, honorary member of the PA crew, hopefully. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a ton of fun. So my 100 mile race that I had scheduled for that weekend got canceled, which is good because my leg has been killing me recently and I've barely been able to walk, much less run. So yeah, that'll be really fun. Get to go back out to the eighth stage and hopefully get some redemption on speed option with the rimfire pistol iron sights. All right, that's all I got for this week, guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks so much for all your support. Had a ton of success with this in only a couple of weeks so far. Sitting at something obscene for views. Just over 50 subscribers and I think I know everybody that's subscribed. I haven't pushed this out to any of the groups or any of the competition shooting forums. So thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for your support. I'm watching all the videos and liking all the videos. Helps out a ton. I really thought I'd be sitting here talking to myself for the first year or so that I was making this. So thanks so much for listening. And I'll see you guys next time.